But there are some, you know, tools which I consider, like, for just the average Joe that's not really into this, but, like, just to have one tool, my favorite is for them to tap into their emotions. And I know that sounds like very baseline, but I gotta tell you the honest truth. Most people are walking around not tapped into their emotions, and emotions are the carriers of personal truth. So if we have this capacity to, to practice recognizing the somatic reaction in our body when an emotion arises, and then essentially turning all of our attention to that emotion so as to become intimate with it, and by intimate I mean see it, feel it, hear it, understand it, then what will happen is the personal truth will essentially come into the conscious awareness, almost like a bubble popping. And you're like, ah, oh, I see it. Okay, so that happened. That caused me to feel this way. This is my personal truth about this circumstance. Now what am I going to do from an objective perspective about that personal truth? I could do anything with it. I could, I could, this could be telling me, you know, looking at this, that I need to communicate this. It could mean that I need to change the way I'm thinking about this. I mean, there's all kinds of things that we could do on a mental, emotional, and even physical level in response to that personal truth. Mm -hmm. So that's the low-hanging fruit, honestly, when it comes to the shadow, is to pay attention to what your emotions are saying. The protocol actually should start with only doing about a week or two weeks of, of simply noticing the somatic sensations in your body. So it's, it's tapping back into the body, because an emotion will always show up on a somatic level. And oftentimes, like, well, you know, we don't talk about this, because we just label emotion. It's, it's sort of like, you know, anger may come up in, in terms of flushing, in terms of a sensation of constriction or buzzing. And it's those types of sensory experiences which we need to recognize again. And so what I, the protocol I usually give people who have an issue with this is that I'll, I'll have them have like a little notebook or something with them. This is the emotional notebook. And for a week or two weeks we pick, depending on what a person wants to commit to, every time they, they like set their timer for like maybe 10 minutes or like what person might do it every hour if they have a really busy life, when that timer goes off, they do a check-in. So it's almost like a, a very short body scan. What are the sensations that I'm feeling in my body? And then they are writing those sensations down. And of course, anytime they really know that they're feeling a sensation, like let's say it's triggered or whatever, same mm -hmm. thing. They're, they're writing down, just the first two weeks, they're just writing down what the somatic sensation is. Then the next two weeks we go and we progress it. So they, they become attuned again to, to the emotions within their body as they occur. Then the next step is you add the, what emotion might this be? And I, I'll like usually print off an entire list for people or have them do that themselves so they can look at the like, okay, buzzing, constriction. The word that matches with this is frustration. So they'll like write down frustration. And that, that's all we do for like the next week or two weeks. Then we add another layer again. So you are like making it so they're so good at this that they can then add things without it just becoming this cluster, right? Sure, it's overwhelming. That next phase, that next layer that we add is is the why. Why am I feeling this? Mm -hmm. So it's then that they go, okay, so looking back, when did this come up in me? Was there anything that happened in my environment? So then they'll write it down, you know, this is why I'm feeling this way. And that's a very, very powerful um, practice because so many people are not even aware of the fact that something in their life had an effect on them in this way. Yeah. So. And it also helps because we're, we're also in this pattern, you'll notice, with people of just constantly emotionally invalidating themselves. So that step helps to be like, wait a minute, there's a reason why I feel emotions. They just, just come out of nowhere, you know. <clears throat> and then that, 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 yeah, then that last layer is, okay, so what is the personal truth? What is the personal truth about this situation? You know, it might be something like, I don't like being disrespected. Okay, that's interesting. So there's tons of exploration you could do there around the disrespect. Like, you can, you can decide from that point, there's so many choice points. Like, you can decide from that place of, I don't like disrespect. You can choose to go back into childhood. When, was I, when did I feel disrespected in my life? Oh wait, this is a chronic pattern. I always felt disrespected in my life. Okay, when was the first time? And like, using that, you can actually go back and do a healing process around that original experience. And even that will bring you closer to personal truth and your limits and boundaries, which is you know essentially just a, a firm personal truth about who you will and what you won't be around, like what you will and won't tolerate. Also, I mean, another direction you could go with that is like, well, was I really disrespected? You can look at this from a more objective perspective where it's like well, you're shifting the way you're thinking about this. Was I really disrespected? Or was it really the, you know, the, what is the truth of the situation? Is it that the person just was in a horribly bad mood and had literally nothing to do with me, you know? So you're sort of becoming more aware of what the reality of the situation is. And through this exploration process, you come to 
what that action step is, if anything mm-hmm. that needs to be taken. Sometimes that action step, let's call it, could just be changing the way you're thinking about the situation. Other times it's a conversation that you can have. But based on doing that, you're going to come at it from a totally different place. Not like, screw you, dude, you know. <laughs> um, you're going to come at it from this very objective place where it's like you're really setting down what your truth is in that relationship. Another thing could be we take an action that we would normally label an action, not like a conversation or like changing the way we were thinking. You know, maybe I feel disrespected. It goes beyond a conversation and you literally walk out the door. I mean, there's a million actions you could take. It's just the goal is to become aware and objective enough that you can really make the right choice Yeah. for yourself. Yeah.